education has always been an important factor for Muslims. The very first revelation commanded the illiterate Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to read. Ever since, the quest for knowledge has been ongoing. Assalamu alaikum, you're watching this week's Anur the Light. The Assalam Education Institute was founded by one of South Africa's foremost scholars, Dr. Ahmed Didat. Its doors have welcomed thousands of learners, and we got to spend the day finding out more about the goings on here. The Assalam Educational Institute can be found 90 kilometers outside of Durban in a rural area known as Braemar. Nestled on top of a hill and surrounded by picture-perfect scenery, the school has been around for 50 years, seeing to the needs of the community it finds itself in. One of the basic uh, human rights is education, and Assalam ensures that we offer education in this rural, deep rural setting, and at the same time ensuring that the education is of top, top quality. We expose ourselves to scrutiny from the department who have their own quality assurance team. And in addition to that, there are other bodies that offer examinations and testing. For example, the Olympiads, uh, and, and we take part in these Olympiads to make sure that we are on par with what's being offered out there. The school is named after one of the 99 tributes of Allah and means the giver and source of peace. The rural settlement that surrounds the institution is characterized by great poverty and socio-economic lack. Assalam's educational method is focused and motivated by the need to create self-efficient, contributing South African citizens, replacing impoverishment with abundance and hardship with opportunity. The institution provides compulsory education up to grade nine as required by law in South Africa. Yeah, we bring in our children at a very early age, some as young as three years old, because we believe that a lot of, uh, you know, impact can be made in the early years. So we start uh, below grade double zero as well. And then we t take them right up to grade nine. And, and inshallah, next year, we will be introducing our first grade tens. Okay, and, uh, and even that too, we want to make sure that we choose the, the best. And we are going for a science and maths uh, combination of subjects for the, for the for FET phase. Well, Assalam follows the same uh, curriculum that the department offers. In addition to that, we added Islamic subjects so that, uh, you know, we, we, are, we are offering religious-based education where there's a lot of emphasis on values. Assalam also boasts a skills training center where short practical training courses are available for the unemployed members of the community. These courses include sewing, baking, woodwork and welding. We introduce vocational training here and eventually form partnership with Coastal College, which existed for the last 15 years, offering skills training and national examination courses. And through these programs, we have been able to uplift the community tremendously. It's very important that the local community are employable. So the skills we offer are basic skills like plumbing, uh, electricity, uh, welding, baking, and so on. Since 1950, the Assalam Educational Institute has been arming both the young and not so young with Islamic based education and training. Some of the success of the school can be seen in their teacher training program. Many learners who've graduated from the school are now either teaching here or in the surrounding communities. I think we, nobody can really appreciate what is happening at Assalam without visiting the place. You know, pamphlets can be misleading and brochures can be misleading. So a, a visit is most important. And it's uh, sad that many South Africans haven't seen Assalam yet, despite the fact that Didat came here 60 years ago and the school started 40 years ago. And there are many South Africans that haven't seen Assalam yet. The main objective of the institution is Dawah. 
So through these programs, we are providers with the opportunity to convey the message of Islam to others. And those who embrace Islam to strengthen the knowledge of Islam, so they could go out and convey the message to others and at the same time play leadership roles. And at the same time, when they leave here, they go away from here with a career that they can follow. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon to change the world and is one of the most basic human rights. A Salam Educational Institute gives both hope and opportunity to enable others to fulfill their potential. With the passing of Ramadan and Eid, our events calendar is fast filling up. Get yourself a pen and paper to jot down what's happening in your neck of the woods. Keep your little ones entertained while learning. The Lodium Centurion hosts creative classes for children between the age of 4 and 12 years old. The classes include baking arts and crafts, DIY, speech and drama, henna workshop and much more at 100 Rand per lesson. Ingredients are included every Saturday from 10 to 11.30 a.m. A Lady Survival Boot Camp will be kicking off on the 10th of June this year where ladies get together to share fitness tips and help each other reach their health goals. This event will be held every Monday at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. You have a choice. You can throw in the towel or use it to wipe the sweat off your face for 150 Rand per month. To book your spot and get more information, contact 078-382-8809. The Islam community will be reminded on some of the important topics in Islam that includes the principles in relation to istikama, knowledge of necessitates actions, the characteristics of a pious wife and many more. Delivered by graduates of the Islamic University in Saudi Arabia. The Golden Reminder will be held on Friday the 21st of June from 8 to 9.30 p.m. at 4 Garnet Road in Lansdowne, Cape Town. Another Saturday evening filled with mouth-watering different types of dishes. The Smarket Night Food Market will be taking place on Saturday the 8th of June from 5 until 9.30 p.m. This is a platform where different cooks will be showcasing their recipes. This event is held every second week at Smarket 123 Problem Makize Road, Musgrave, Durban. For more details, contact Amira Khan on 082-741-8805. Much has been touted about the fourth industrial revolution. But what exactly is it? As global citizens, we should be aware of all that's happening around us. And today's topic sheds some much needed light on where we stand in the era of information technology. The fourth industrial revolution is touted to turn the world as we know it on its head. With advances in technology coming at breakneck speed, humanity is being readied for changes that will at once better our lives but will also pose a threat to us. So the fourth industrial revolution was a term that was created by Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum. And what he noticed was there was a massive change in technology happening. Uh, and there was various things happening. So few trends were happening. Computation was coming, becoming very cheap. Uh, there were lots of sensors being deployed, Internet of Things. Um, there was a massive move to big amounts of data, using big data in companies. And there was lots of automation and robotics. And he called this term of all these technologies coming together and driving business forward into the future as the fourth industrial revolution. Over the past 200 years, the world has seen great change, starting with the mechanization. This gave rise to factories and mass production, and lastly, the digital revolution. All of these advancements impact on human life and moving us forward in leaps and bounds. I think if you look back, you know, let's say 100 years, the knowledge that you gained was you know, relevant for a long period of time. So um, my father or some, some people's parents had a career for their entire lifetime. 
and they did that same thing for their entire lifetime. Um, and I think now what's happening is that is compressing. So you're going to have multiple careers over your lifetime. So you have to continuously learn something new and then, and then reinvent yourself and learn something else. You know, so a, a continuous cycle of learning and reinvention. All, however, is not doom and gloom. The advances that are being made will one day seep into every facet of our existence. But there is risk. One of the biggest concerns around the fourth industrial revolution is employment. A huge percentage of the world's population can be rendered jobless, but we just need to look to our past for lessons for our future. A lot of the jobs that used to be um, applicable for people, uh, those are becoming automated with machines and with uh, algorithms. Right? So you've got robots doing certain things and the computers, the programs in the computers doing some of those things. So, so where someone was clicking on something and then just entering data into a screen, those type of jobs are going away. Where someone was on a production line doing something that can easily be automated by a robot, those jobs are going away. So then the question is, what do people do going forward? Um, and I think the answer is creativity. Muslims are not unaffected by the changes ahead and shouldn't want to isolate themselves from what's coming. I, I, think, I think we can already see a lot of the effects of the fourth industrial revolution on Islam as a religion. Um, previously, when I needed knowledge, I was limited to my social circle and my community. In today's environment, I can stream a lecture from the US, you know, into, um, on my iPhone, right? So I don't need to um, attend the lecture locally or attend, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that you have so much of access to this, uh, to a wide variety of different perspectives from the various ulema, that people are being exposed to a lot wider variety of viewpoints. Um, and I think that's going to impact on how we, how we engage with ulema and the community and how it works. Parliament under President Cyril Ramaphosa has identified the fourth industrial revolution as something that can significantly add value to the lives of South Africans. But he's also noted the challenges to employment that will come with this. I think it's a very good thing that uh, uh, our president is looking at it. And I think it's a big challenge for South Africa as an economy, as a country. Because if you look at where South Africa is from, from a, you know, evolutionary perspective, we're still a developing economy. So if you had to split our workforce by the type of labor that we have, and we split it into manual and, you know, um, if you want to call it lower paying jobs and high knowledge work, worker type jobs, I'd say 80 to 90% is on, on the manual and the you know, uneducated, unskilled type of jobs. Um, and that's a challenge for the country. So, so fundamentally, we need to start moving people up into the creative um, task. And that's, that's not a challenge that we can solve very quickly because it's, it goes through from our economic policy or to our educational policy. Um, how do we make sure that people are, uh, are educated in a way that they can, they can go into this creative task and give them better jobs. Some of the areas that the fourth industrial revolution will impact on are artificial intelligence, robotics and nanotechnology. Government is being proactive and encouraging learners to interact as well as familiarise themselves with what's coming. We run a tutoring agency, so we provide tutors to students who need uh, tutorial services from anything from grade one all the way to second year. For us, the fourth industrial revolution basically means how can we uh, deliver our services and uh, faster uh, to the majority of the people who cannot access them now and, uh, and, and make sure that it's quality service that they couldn't get one-on-one -on -one and taking it to the next level. The advantage that the fourth industrial revolution brings to us is how can we deliver our services better and faster. That's all the advantage that we see. And we, can, we are already exploring the opportunities that it brings with in terms of streaming lessons to students, but not just streaming where it's just one-way communication. We 
trying to make it a two-way whereby the student can also communicate with us while we're streaming so that the streaming uh, content that we're bringing out is relevant to the student. The future is here and now. How we embrace it will determine how we interact with it. One thing is certain, our lives will remain in flux as change happens. <laughs>
Thankfully, I can always get the recipe on YouTube whenever I want to make it. That's it from me for this week. Shukran for always tuning in. Kenda mare mokwanda kere aripuere bona nen khabe. Assalamu alaikum. Khuda hazir hai. Khuda maujood hai. Khuda Tu ibtida tu intezo sajde 